Hello, and welcome to this lecture entitled Conceptual Synthesis Excel Dump, an inelegant name for an elegant technique. This lecture will show you where the CSED fits, what the CSED is, and an example from your CSED exercise. Like with the lecture on reflective memos, the source for much of this CSED idea is the blog of Dr. Raul Pacheco Vega. The CSED is the third tool that you use to get from a pile of books and articles to your literature review. The CSED makes it easy to compare your author's interpretations so you can answer the so what question. That is a question of how your ideas fit in with the prevailing historical literature and what your research report means in the greater scheme of historical work. The concept saturation Excel dump is a table you build in Excel or other spreadsheet software. The idea is simple. You fill in the cells on the spreadsheet with information from your reflective memos. When filled in, the CSED allows you to compare different authors' interpretations for each question you ask or point you make. You can easily use this to compare interpretations from sources concerning your overall research question or claim, or for any subsidiary research questions or assertions. You can do all of this on one or multiple CSEDs. This tool is flexible, except for completing the exercise to show that you understand the idea of the CSED. You can use this tool as rigorously or informally as you like. When completing your exercise, I prefer that you were as rigorous as possible. Another useful aspect of the CSED is that it signals when you have enough sources and in their interpretations. That is, when you've gotten a sufficient body of interpretations to compose a satisfactory lit review on your research question and on any assertions you make that also require engaging your sources. Finally, the whole point of the CSED is to help you engage interpretations and to make writing the lit review easier. Now, let's look at an example of a CSED. This is what the top few rows of your CSED exercise look like. The information between the blue row and the gray row are instructions and an example, slightly modified from the example Dr. Pacheco Vega provided in his blog post. In discussing this, I refer to specific cells by numbered row and lettered column. For example, to draw your attention to the title cell for your concept, I refer to it as 1A. It's important to remember that each row concerns a single source as you fill in columns A through F. G and H are slightly different. Remember, too, that each column is a distinct field of information from that single source until you get to G and H. Finally, Remember that you are taking information from your reflective memos and plugging it into these cells so you can make comparisons. The most important info to get right is the info in column A, your concept. What is your research question or later your claim or thesis? Write that into cell 5A the first cell that appears under the gray row. Then in row five, enter information from your first source that addresses that point and that answers the questions in the column titles. You should write enough of your research question into 5A that you'll understand it later when you read it and you're probably gonna be under stress. When you write your exercise, Make sure you write enough so that I understand your question or claim. My advice is to line up your sources as best you can, but to write the same question or claim onto every row. 
for every source that you consult. This is regardless of where that source might show up in your CSED. For example, you might pull a source in row five that addresses your central question. You might pull sources serendipitously for rows six and seven that address a different question, a subsidiary question. Then in row eight, you have another source that addresses the original main question or claim. Write the question or claim and use the same language in 5A and 8A, so that later you can use the sort or find function of Excel spreadsheets in order to bring these things together. Pacheco Vega's published example doesn't do this. It leaves all but one source on a particular question unlabeled. I modify his work by advising you to label each source, that is each row, with the question or claim you want it to address. This again allows you to use the sort or filter function to bring your comparable sources together. Now let me go through each cell along row five where you'll discuss one single source in columns A through F. In cell 5B, write the citation to the source, make it a full citation, format it according to Turabian as you see that I've done in cell 3B. In cell 5C, state the source's claim in your own words. In cell 5D, enter a quotation that supports your entry in the previous cell. I suggest a thesis statement. Unless the author writes that thesis in the conclusion, some do, it should come from early in the article or chapter. Enter a page number in parentheses. Since you and I know that you're taking a quote from a single source that you identified in cell 5B, you don't have to add an author's name to that citation. In cell 5E, titled Notes 1, add a note that helps you discuss this source's interpretation. It's very likely you address this in your reflective memo for this source, so abstract that entry and enter it here. The same with cell 5F, notes two. These can be full notes from your reflective memo, or they can be AIDS memoir, just enough to remind you what you wrote. Things change now when we get to columns G. Cross-reference, cross-ref. I advise you to add citations in your reflective memos to works that address the same ideas the one the memo was about. For the question and source in row five, then cell 5G is for one or more of these cross-reference sources. Cell 5H is for a quote or summary from the cross-reference sources in cell 5G, not from the source in 5B. The sources you enter into cell 5G can become their own rows. Adding them to cell 5G and placing a note or quote in cell 5H are just placeholders, things to remind you that these sources relate to the source occupying all of row five. The sources in 5G and 5H can legitimately become rows six and seven if you've added two cross-references. Now, if you've added minor sources to cell 5G and H, you might consider not making them into their own separate rows. It's possible that the sources in 5G and H argue against your row 5 source, and you simply want to make a note of it in your lit review. This is likely to be pretty confusing, but if you begin with an annotated bibliography, then write reflective memos, compiling those into the concept saturation Excel dump, this all should be easier than it appears at first glance. This then ends the lecture. And as always, thanks for your attention.